Hi everyone, my name is Marie Miao. Thank you for joining us for our watercolor class today. And today we have Davina Wong, who is our Hi. watercolor art teacher. And before we get started, I just wanted to go over the materials that you should have received in your package. Um, so you should have received your watercolor paper. And you may want to take um, one, one piece of watercolor paper out. And you should, have have, you should have your watercolor palette, watercolor paint, and two brushes, different sizes. And what you want to have prepared from your home is just a cup of water, um, maybe a tissue for the blotting. And I think that's it. Oh, oh and, and, the, your, and the washi tape. tape. You should have had your washi tape so that um, we'll be taping it down on the table and we'll explain further. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna <laughs> hand it over to you, Davina. Thank you, Marie. <laughs> I'm excited to be here today. Um, this is definitely different than the typical class <laughs> I've taught in the past. Um, I wish I was able to see all your beautiful faces, but I know we will make the best of what we have here today. Um, first of all, um, I guess we'll give you guys a moment to collect your water and napkin. And if you have not, to um, open up your paint kits. It's like a tab on both ends to have that ready. And I'll begin by um, telling you a little bit about the paper. The watercolor paper is an important medium because um, it's hard to paint with regular paper or printer paper. Um, I've tried in the past with my kids and it always ends up being a mess. <laughs> and so if you see the paper, you'll notice that there are two different types of texture on each side. One has a little bit more of a fine texture and the other one is a slightly smoother. Um, both sides are fine to use, but today I would prefer to use the side with the fine micro texture if you can see it looks here. like it has a little like it's a little bumpy uh -huh. right? it's slightly like bumpier a, if you yeah. run your finger across it um, since we will, we will be doing um, a little bit more detail work with the flowers later on and I really enjoy watercolor because uh, even though it tends to scare a lot of people I think growing up a lot of us are familiar with using the Crayola watercolor palettes in grade school and um, the paint just becoming a big brown mess. I know that still happens with my kids too at home sometimes. <laughs> but there, there is a little formula that can help uh, us avoid that issue. And um, if you look at the colors on the palette, you'll notice that we have what I call warm colors and cool colors. So warm colors are typically colors that remind you of um, warmth, heat, uh, fire. So those would be things like uh, colors such as orange, red, pink, and yellows. And the cool colors would be anything that reminds you of um, you know, coolness, water, ice, grass, um, green, blue, and purple. And then what we have left is white, black, and brown. And so these are the colors I call the mixing colors that can change the shades of each of these different colors here. So if you want to make something lighter, we would do that by adding white. And in order to make something a darker shade, we would add just a tiny, tiny bit of black. And for brown, I love using brown because anytime you add a tiny bit of brown to any of the colors, it creates more of a neutralized color, which tends to be more um, realistic to nature, closer to what you'd see yeah, out in nature. So we will be using a little bit of um, brown to mix with some of the colors. And um, as well as this is what I call a mustardy yellow, and this is the brighter yellow. So we'll be using these colors as well. So I'm going to start by taping my paper onto a flat surface. Um, the reason for this is so that when we wet the paper, it won't ripple and um, you know create kind of a 
bent piece of <laughs> paper. So it keeps everything down so that in the end we can have a flat sheet of paper once everything is dry. So I'm going to begin by painting the edges. Oh, and you oh. can see too <laughs> that it creates a natural border. It's really mm -hmm. pretty. That's a good point. Yeah, I love it. Thanks. Okay, so All right. I'm going to paint. And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. enough to hold it down. Okay. I'll give you guys a moment. Tell you a bit about what we'll do next. The next step is um, we're going to take the square edge brush and we are going to do what I like to tell younger children when I teach. We are going to wake up the colors by adding a drop of water, a couple drops is fine too, to each of the colors to kind of wake them up, get them ready for painting. And another thing that I should mention is um, when we're painting, um, to be gentle with the paper, we don't want to uh, paint with too much force because that creates pilling and the paper tends to be bumpy as some of you may have experienced in the past. So um, what you want to do is paint lightly in a back and forth motion like this. We don't want to push down on the brush too hard like this, but just be very gentle with a brush and with a paper. And the great thing about watercolor is that um, the water does a lot of the work for us. And our aim isn't perfection. Everyone's painting will look different, which is perfectly fine. And that's the beauty of watercolor painting is that everyone's artwork will be unique. And that's what we're striving for. And the most important part is to have fun during this process and to, um, to be relaxed and to just enjoy painting and um, watching the colors blend with the water. So the first step is to wet your canvas. So we're going to just run the brush across the paper to wet the entire paper to get it ready for watercolor painting. And that helps the colors blend a bit more to give you that nice watercolor effect. Is there a reason you chose this um, brush size? Um, I chose a smaller brush size since we're using a smaller piece of paper. Okay. But typically, if you have a full size, um, I like using the round brushes. It's in a size 10 or 12. Oh, okay. But it does hold more water, so you do have to be a little bit careful with um, how much water you have in your brush by wiping the excess. But since this one is a thin brush, we don't have to worry too much about excess water. Okay. Yeah. And these are um, nylon bristles, but you can get either like nylon synthetic bris uh, brushes or the natural hair bristles as well. Oh, I think we have a question. Oh, okay. Um, with the angle, it shows you painting upside. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I guess it's upside down. So maybe, um, maybe we'll just have to kind of turn it around and show the oh. finished product, so they know. And it may look a little different. Oh, it may look a little different than this picture. As like I said, sometimes 
gives us flexibility to improvise. You can, we might change, the, you can change the colors. Um, the mountain range may look a little bit different. I'm going to give you guys leeway to be creative and you know have fun with this. So let's see. I think we're about ready. Our paper is moistened. So we're going to create our first color, and that'll be for the sky. And we're going to paint the go all the way down to the middle. So we're going to start from the top and then paint back and forth down to the middle of the paper. Okay. Okay, and then we're going to mix, dip our brush in the water, and we will mix um, the blue here, tap a few times, and put it in our little paint palette here, the little disposable paint palette that we have here. So we're gonna add a few pats of blue, and I'm gonna add some water to it because we want it to be a wash so it'll be a very light wash in the background another thing with cleaning the brushes I like to do a figure eight in the water to help get rid of the excess paint um, you can just lightly run a figure eight through and we'll have a break in between to change the water so if your water gets a little murky later on it's okay and after the blue uh, I'm going to add just a tad bit of mustard yellow, just a couple pats to mix to give it sort of a more natural sky color. Okay, so it should be kind of a watery consistency here. And we can test it out by running a stroke through to see if it's the consistency that we like. And as we brush, um, we're going to go back and forth. I like to leave a little bit of white spot for what would be the clouds. It um, doesn't have to be perfect. Just leave a little bit of space in between. As you see, I'm going to go back and forth with the brush. We see a little bit of white spot in between here. You can make long clouds or shorter clouds. I'm gonna leave it up to you to decide what you'd like to do. Or if you don't wanna make clouds, that's fine too. We can do a blue sky. So I'm going to go down the middle and stop at around this point here. Whenever I see the sky, I'm always reminded of what my mother used to tell me that my grandmother would tell her that, you know, no matter where you are in the world, the sky always looks the same and everyone is looking at the same sky. So I think that's something that's always been comforting to me wherever I am. I feel like, you know, I the like sky that. is universal. <laughs> And if your sky is looking more bluish green or more blue, that's fine too, okay? It's whatever shade you're comfortable with. If you want it to be, um, you know, a brighter blue, then definitely you can add less of the mustard yellow. Okay. Nice. Okay, so once we have the sky in, we're going to clean our brush, and we're gonna paint the background for um, the flowers. So we're going to mix a little bit of, so we're gonna use another quadrant for the, the flowers. I'm gonna add some of this red right here, the bright red. And this will also be a wash. We can make a little bit more of this color so we can also use it for the flowers later on. And then I'm also going to add some water to dilute it. And then I'm also going to add some orange. I'm going for uh, more of a fuchsia color, but if you like red orange or if you like it more just of a bold red, that's fine too. Okay, 
we'll just use the same color for the wash um, when we start painting the flowers so that it's consistent. I'm going to use a tiny bit of pink as well just to brighten it up. the amount of lightness that I like for the background. It'll be very faint. And then we're going to go um, with the remaining part of the paper, we're just going to go halfway so that we have about a quarter left of white. And that we will save for the grass. How are you doing, Marie? I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks nice. Love the very calming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is why I love watercolor painting. I, I used to um, do more oil painting, which requires a little bit more precision and a lot of time. It also takes a long time to dry yeah. um, and a lot of supplies. So the nice thing about watercolors is that it's a little bit more low maintenance and it can be portable. You could bring it with you wherever you go and paint what inspires you. We have the wash down for the flower background. We're going to begin painting the the grass on the last quarter of the paper. So we're going to mix the light green here in another quadrant. We're going to start another quadrant here. Add some water to it. I'm also going to add a tiny, tiny bit of brown. If it gets a little too, too um, olive, we can always add more green. I'm just doing this to neutralize it, to make it a little bit more of a neutral green. We can add more water. And we can add make more of this paint color as well because we'll be using it for the blades of grass. Okay, so when you're ready, you can go ahead and begin painting the last section with the green. It's so interesting because I would have thought to use this green, the other green. Oh, the darker green? Yeah, but I mm -hmm. like the dark green is nice too. I think I feel like if you're painting um, trees mm -hmm. and, or I mean, people could also use a dark green too. But I'm just gonna yeah, go with like a yeah. lighter palette today. But feel free to, um, you know, try different colors when you're home, because we have lots of paper in the yes. pad. So I really encourage you guys to. Try this again with different colors, and you can improvise and have fun with it. Okay. So once we have the grass in, we're going to um, clean our brush. And I think now would be a good time to change the water. Water, okay. Um, as you can tell, the water is getting a little murky, which is fine, but um, I'll give you guys a, a moment just to change, just in case you would like to. And then you can set this brush aside because we'll be using the fine round tip brush next. Okay. okay. So we're going to change the water here. This flower field actually reminds me a lot of the Carlsbad. Yeah. Flower. I've yeah. actually never been, but I always see the beautiful photos online. I've been once and it's really pretty. It's as beautiful as it is. Yes, it's very <laughs> bright. It's very bright. 
And maybe one day we'll make it out next year, perhaps. Yes, after <laughs> COVID. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're going to dip the fine round, fine tip round brush in the water. And we are going to um, dip it into the red or the fuchsia color that we created. We can add a little bit more color. I like to add a little bit more of the red to make it bolder. But we can also, so you can clean your brush each time you dip it into another um, color just to keep the colors bright. I like to add more color because what we're going to do next is create the little speckles that represent the flowers. So I'm going to dip the brush in the paint. So it should be a little bit more concentrated in color, a little bit more okay. pigment, but still enough water so that when we dip this brush, we're going to hold it over the lower half of the paper okay. and slightly above, like maybe a couple inches above the paper. And we're going to hold the, the brush um, vertically. And then we're going to just lightly tap. I like to tap at the top of the metal portion of this brush to create little speckles that will represent the flowers. And if you notice here, some of the color starts to spread, which is a good thing because it makes it look more like the flowers. Like when you take a photo, you might notice that um, usually what is further away from you is slightly blurred. So we want to create that effect with, with this. Do you have a favorite flower, Marie? Um, I do like peonies. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I do. I like I like hydrangeas too. Yeah, those are beautiful. And anemones. Oh. Like a dark, dark inner. What oh. are they called? You have to show me a photo. Yeah, it almost looks navy to me. Oh, that yeah, that's really pretty. Peonies are also one of my favorite flowers. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to go around and um, try to evenly speckle it across. And it's okay if you get a little bit in the sky. Um, if it really bothers you, you can take clean, clean the brush first and then wipe off the excess water on the side. And you can just slightly roll the brush over the color to remove excess pigment. And we can also use the paper towels. So it's lightly blotted if you want. But if you have some in the sky, that's fine too. Okay, I'm gonna add just a little bit more speckle. So we have more. It looks like a actual flower field. Okay. So what we're doing now is right here, right? Like mm -hmm. this. So all these tiny little dots okay. here. And if you notice, some like yours is a little bit blurred, which is yeah. nice. I really like that. Mine has dried, so. I the think my speckles are more concentrated. <laughs> so paper for this is pretty wet. <laughs> that's okay. That's good. Though. I like the effect of that. So don't worry if yours doesn't look exactly the same as ours. Um, everyone's, like I said, will be different, and that's the beauty of it. And then we're going to clean our brush and go back to the green color that we created. I'm going to add a little bit more green to make it more concentrated. And. I bought the excess paint and to paint the blades of grass, we're going to do the fine blades of grass first before we do the larger ones. Um, we'll hold the brush upright like this. Okay. So with the tip pointed down directly and we're going to lightly paint in this motion. Okay. This. So this is what I like to call breath strokes. 
Okay. I just think of it as like painting. Okay, a, a I'm gonna watch you do one first. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna lightly see how you're just lightly, very lightly. So the lighter pressure you use, the more fine the the little stems will be. So you can kind okay. of just we're not gonna do it for every single <laughs> speckle, but. I'm just going to go around to different sides, just adding little um, stems. And it's nice to make them in different directions. So one could be leaning towards the right, and another one could be leaning towards the left, just to give it um, more of a realistic feel, since nothing in nature is completely uniform. Since we were talking about peonies, um, and those are also my favorite flowers. My husband, who usually doesn't do the grocery shopping, the, the one the one time he will go to the grocery store is when peonies are in season at Trader Joe's. Oh, I know Trader <laughs> Joe's has really good peonies. Mm -hmm. They have some of the best flowers. I'm gonna add some in the back and in the fore. Here. And if, if the stems are getting too thick, you just wipe off some of the excess paint on the side of the little paint palette. doing okay. I think and it's hard with the pressure. I'm yeah. trying to get used to the pressure. Oh yeah, you're doing yeah. good. And yeah, sometimes with the water it tends to spread if it's a little too wet, which is hard to avoid because the paper is wet. So it's, over time as the paper dries it becomes easier to fill in the details of the flowers. Okay, so now I'm going to um, add the larger blades of grass in the front, since okay. whatever is closer to us appears to be bigger. So we're going to create um, slightly longer blades of grass in the front here, on the bottom part of this paper. And so again, we can paint them going in different directions. I like to do one going left and then another going right so they look like real blades of grass. So when I paint, I tend to put a little bit more pressure in the beginning and then lighter at the end to create more of that, um, I don't know how to explain it. I guess create more of that <laughs> like natural, natural blade like yeah, movement. <laughs> It almost looks like um, it's windy uh -huh. and the <laughs> leaves are blowing. Yes, exactly. That's the look I'm going for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add some here on the side just to, to frame the picture a bit. Some of them might be longer and some are shorter. But that's, that's totally f fine. I have a variety of different kinds of strokes. I might add just a tiny bit of brown just to neutralize the green a little bit more too. Okay. I'm going to continue adding more blades of grass in the front here. And when we're done, then we will go in and fill in some of the flower petals. I, I want to let the paper dry a little bit more so it'll be easier for us to paint in the flower petals. Looks like I have a good amount of <laughs> grass blowing on the bottom here. So once you guys are ready, we can begin painting the flower petals. I'm going to clean the brush again, wipe off the excess paint, and we're going to go back to the reddish-orange hue that we created here. And we can even add a, a little bit more color because to make uh, the flower petals, we need 
to have more paint pigment just so that the water doesn't run off. Okay, so I'm going to choose the areas closer to us on the bottom where the larger blades of grass are to start drawing the larger petals. I'm going to add a little bit more color actually. I'm going to go with some orange and then mix the red in directly from the palette so we get more of a concentrated amount of pigment. And I'm going to choose just any one of these stems here that's closer to the front, which is towards the bottom of the page, to draw these petals in. And Do you I'm have a, a technique for the petals? Um, so to draw the petals, we're going to also hold the, the brush upright. Okay. And um, just with light pressure, using the tip of the brush, we're going to paint little petals and they can be facing downwards or um, some of them can be up and some of them are facing downwards here as you can see but uh, I think I'm going to do about maybe four petals per flower okay. so I'm going to choose um, to draw them in throughout the page and not have like a concentrated amount on one side so that they're just they're evenly scattered throughout. And if the flower color is, isn't as concentrated as you see here, you can go ahead and just dip your brush directly in the paint palette just to get more of a concentrated amount of paint so that it'll make it a little easier to paint the flowers. And you can make them various sizes. Some petals might be larger than others, and that's perfectly fine, too. How are you doing? Really I'm cute. okay. I like this. And then, like I said, again, everyone's painting will look different and that's perfectly fine. It's, probably a, it's such a fine um, paintbrush that even just a little <laughs> bit of paint can spread uh -huh. a lot. And once this all dries, it also looks slightly different too. Oh, that's it true. It adds to the effect of the watercolor look. I'm going to add a, some smaller petals in the background here. Just lightly dot them with the tip of your brush. Very little pressure. And those can have maybe three petals. They don't have to all be exactly uniform with four petals or five petals. Just so that we have a, a good amount of flowers in the background. So some of them might have more color and some might have a lighter wash to them and that adds to the effect of uh, what would be seen as in the front, what would be seen as in the front and in the back. This is helpful because I didn't really understand the depth of how paintings are drawn so uh -huh. it's interesting to see this. Yeah, the steps of what you need to do. Yeah, I always think of it as like a photograph, right? When you look at a photograph. Yeah. <laughs> the foreground and the background. I'm going to go in and add just a slight amount more. Okay, and then we're going to we're going to finish up once you guys are done with the flower petals, and you can go ahead and add in more petals um, once we're finished. It might be even easier to add some of the details once the paper is dry, and it will be like the second layer. Um, we're going to finish off by painting the mountain range in the background. Okay. 
So we're going to go back to the blue that we had here. I don't really have much left, so I'm going to create a little bit more blue by adding blue with, I like to add just a tint of purple to make the mountains look a little bit more majestic. Add more water. And just a tiny, tiny bit of brown. Just to neutralize it a little bit. Okay, and then it'll be um, like a medium wash, a slightly darker than the background. But we want it to look like a mirage. Okay. paint the mountain range, we will also use the fine tip round bristle brush. And I'm going to start from the left and go to the right, mainly because I'm left handed. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to go right, uh, right to left, feel free to do so as well. So I'm going to start here, up here, and oh, this is kind of light. So if it's a little light, you can add a little more color. I'm going to add more blue to mine. start here for the first mountain range and then I'm gonna go downwards and you can make it um, sort of textured I don't know if you can see here slightly bumpy to make it look like actual mountain okay. ranges and then I drag a little bit of the color down part way with little strokes like this to give it the effect of the texture on the mountains and then I'm gonna go down and end that range here. I'm gonna drag the color down. I'm gonna clean the brush. And using the clean brush, I'm going to um, just blend out the bottom part of this mountain range to create more texture on the mountain. Darker than I thought, but it looks okay. Yeah, and once it dries, it'll look a little different yeah. too. It might lighten up as well. And then I'm going to start the other mountain range. I'm going to create a smaller one here and then go up. And you guys can feel free to create as many mountain ranges as you want, or if you want to have a valley, you can mm -hmm. have it dip down more. I'll leave it up to you. Just have fun with it and enjoy the process of painting. I'm going to go up this way and end this side. And yes, drag the Since you have down. so much, um, you have extra paper, you can do like a sunset too, practicing mm -hmm. those colors. Although, the skies right now look like that, so. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. Okay. Yes, I'm going to drag the color down just a little okay. bit. Yeah, I really like how yours is drying. So. Okay. Thank <laughs> you, teacher. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, like what Marie was saying, you can add, um, for the next, another one, and add a sunset in the background using the warm colors that we were talking about. Um, you can also make it a night sky by using black, just a little bit of black with the blue to make the sky darker. And you can paint the mountain range black to give it a silhouette. And you can um, leave a space for the moon. So just, you know, try different things and practice painting and each painting will look different but yeah, I think that's what makes it interesting. Hmm. Can't believe I made it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did a great job. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm a little proud of myself today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was teaching my, my husband last night. I was going over the painting with him and he's he's in finance and he always jokes that he doesn't have creative bone in his body, but 
he was able to paint it too. So yeah. I tell people, you know, if my kids can paint, if my husband can paint, then anyone um. can learn to paint a watercolor. Well, I hope you all enjoyed um, the class as well. And thank you, Davina, for teaching us. This was so much fun. Um, you know, you can continue to paint for as long as you'd like. Um, mm -hmm. Our our next class will be next next month um, with alcohol ink painting. Ooh. You'll get to paint um, coasters with alcohol ink, so That's I hope awesome. you'll register for that. Um, that way we can mail you the DIY kit. Um, well, thank you so much for being here, and I thank hope I, we get to see you next month. Bye. Bye. Thank you. It was a pleasure to paint with you guys.